Hello everyone, my name is Clancy's and welcome to the Clancy's so without further ado, let's get into this uh, video But before I get into the video, please give me a like guys So in this video, I want to talk about the issue of Miley Cyrus Dave who I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name correctly I apologize if I'm butchering it Y'all are asking me why I'm not covering that story And I would like to kind of paint you a picture as to why I'm not covering his story but because you guys are asking me to do so i have considered that i'm going to do it but you will find out later why so stay tuned i have my script here i thought let me script this down and read my script because i want to speak from my heart so that you get to understand why i have not touched the devil matter so first i had to read a newspaper article that i found quite interesting from times live of the 1st of august 2023 which reads, disbarred advocate Malisela Defo arrested in Pretoria. Gauteng police confirmed on Tuesday that disbarred advocate Malisela Defo, who was one of the defense lawyers in the uh, Senzo Meiwa trial, was arrested and detained at the Pretoria Central Police Station. Police uh, can confirm a 53-year-old man has been arrested today on charges of fraud, assault, malicious damage to property, and trespassing. Times Live continued to report, previously reported that Judge Winston Msimeki penned a judgment on March 22, 2022, officially throwing Defo off the Mayowa case. This after he was allegedly misbehaving, being disrespectful, and causing drama in the Johannesburg High Court in another case in which he was involved. Then I was like, okay, that's interesting. So it turns out this is how Defo had shown disrespect to Judge Msimeki. Now, when I read this, I could not help but giggle. But at the same time, I was like, oh, somebody these days is taking on the judges because apparently our judges in this country are pretty spoiled. They are the gods of the court. You can't tell them what to do. That is why in the Senzo Mewa murder trial, we see uh, Judge Ratamukwatleng behaving the way he does because he's untouchable, apparently. That is what I've been hearing from many lawyers like, oh, the judges in our court, yeah, they can do whatever. They can even call you whatever they want to call you. That is why uh, Advocate Mshololo seems to be the target of, uh, uh, of Rada. And he will not even apologize because he knows he's protected by whatever privileges that he's protected by. So, uh, Defu seems to be like, nope, this needs to come to an end. And he has been literally uh, challenging the, the judges. So basically, Times Live, uh, this is what they reported that Defu did to Msimeki. He basically he went as far as telling Msimeki that he was not a sober judge. Secondly, he was 73 years old when he's supposed to have retired at 70. And that he's carrying political mandate without a case. And then when I read that, I was like, why do I like this devil person? He seems to be shaking things up in that court. So Mr. Malisela, therefore, formerly advocate, decided to put on his robes. And despite his disbandment, head to the Senzo Meiwa trial to represent his clients. Apparently, at this point, he is disbarred by a high court. Then, something caught my eye about what he said to Msimeki, that he's 73 years old, and he's supposed to have retired at 70. And I was like, wait a minute, that makes a good point. What is the age of our judge's retirement? Of course, I went down the rabbit hole, and the rabbit hole, this is what he told me. The Constitution provides that a judge of the Constitutional Court is appointed for a non-renewable term of 12 years or until the age of 70, whichever one comes first. Judges of other courts hold office until discharged from active service in terms of uh, an act of parliament. I also found out that if a judge is turned 70 on the bench and he has not served uh, his 15-year service, he can still continue up until he has served 15 years on the bench. However, though, judges can retire when they turn 65 if they want to. But they ought to serve at least 
15 years before they retire. Now let's get to the reason why I have not been speaking about Defo. I wanna go as far back as I can so that I can draw you the picture as to why I have not spoken about Defo, okay? Let's start there. Now the reason why I am touching the Manisela Defo matter is because a lot of you have been asking me why I haven't touched on this matter. So many of you have asked me to talk about it. You need a different perspective on all corners. But let's start here. The reason why I have not touched the Defo matter is because of what I've been saying. That I did not follow Senzo Meiwa murder trial under Judge Maumela. Because I had lost interest in the Senzo Meiwa murder as far back as 2015. In 2015, I asked, how come the police did not arrest the people that were with Senzo Meiwa in the Kumalo house in 2014? And I remember saying, I think it was accidental. I did believe it back in 2015 that the death of Senzo Meiwa was accidental. But this is what my reason why I thought it was accidental. I had two scenarios in mind at the time before I started developing other uh, scenarios. The first scenario was that someone was playing with a gun and it unfortunately went off and killed Senzo Meiwa. Or someone brought a gun on that particular day Senzo Meiwa and his friends together with the Kumanos were having a great time on the 26th of October 2014. Remember the child of Kelly Kumalo, I think his name is Christian. I think at the time he was about three years old. So I'm thinking in my mind that it's possible that Christian may have come across the gun that was brought by one of the people in the house. He took it, played, or probably was playing with it. Maybe he even pointed it at Senzo Meiwa and maybe the person that brought it said, no, don't worry, uh, it's locked. Even if he pulls the trigger, it's not going to uh, fire. Only to fire when the boy pulled the trigger. I'm not saying he did it. It's just a scenario in my mind back in 2015 that I had uh, played in my head that it's possible that the boy is the one that they're trying to protect. But then again, you're protecting a three-year-old. A three-year-old does not have criminal capacity whatsoever. Then I continue to say, Kelly's firstborn must have seen the gun, picked it up, and it went off. And the bullet hit Senzo in the chest, killing him. I had these scenarios in my head because nothing was being done or said about the death of Senzo Meiwa. On my Facebook posts, which was my last one on Senzo Meiwa, on this matter, on my Facebook posts, which was my last one on this matter, I said the Meiwas will never know who killed their loved one. You watch. That's what I said in my post. And that was the end of it. And that's also the, the day I also stopped Facebooking. Here we are almost 10 years later and the Meiwas still don't know who killed Senzo. I should have been in Sangoma, honestly. In 2020, when I heard that five men were arrested for the death of Senzo Meiwa, I threw my hands up in the air. And I said, who are these innocent people that are going to be pinned with the death of Senzo Meiwa? And why now, six years later? Even in 2020, when the five were arrested, I still maintained that the killer is with Senzo Meiwa in the Kumalo house on that fateful night. The interesting thing is, sometime after Senzo Meiwa was murdered, a man by the name of Zanombata was arrested for the death of Senzo Meiwa. And the poor guy spent almost a month in jail. I still said no, wrong man. The killer is with Senzo Meiwa in the Kumalo house on the 26th of October, 2014. It's not Zanombata that killed Senzo Meiwa. But because I lost interest in this case, I did not bother to follow all the other innocent people like a guy that had gone and confessed for killing Senzo Meiwa at the Peter Marisberg Magistrate's Court. The magistrate did not believe him and threw him out apparently. And this is a story that Sfiso Meiwa continues to tell. So by the time the first trial took place, I couldn't be bothered because in my heart of hearts, I did not believe for a second that those five men stand accused of killing Senzo Meiwa were the right people. 
the right people are the ones that we will send to Meiwa in the Kumalo house on that fateful night. Even Sfiso Meiwa, Senzo's brother, shared with the nation that they had received a call from Tumelo Madala, allegedly, who was crying on the phone announcing the mistaken shooting of Senzo Meiwa and he had died. The Mewas do not believe that the five men stand accused of killing their loved one are the right people. The Mewas are adamant because they know what they were told by Tumelo Madala on that night, allegedly. If the Mewas don't believe that the five men responsible for the killing of Senzo Meiwa, then who are we to believe otherwise? unless you have a warped sense of reality. Therefore, I did not pay much of attention to the first trial, meaning anything and everything that was happening in that trial, I did not take any interest. I didn't even know the names of the five men accused of killing Senzo Meiwa, let alone their lawyers, investigators, the prosecutors, and the judge that presided over that trial. I only got to learn of them all when the trial was de novo. I only took an interest again in the Senzo Meiwa murder and trial because of you. As many of you know that I have a true crime a YouTube channel that I have had since Kororo days, where I posted true crime stories. So my true crime channel, I started it early 2021 and I was posting true crime stories. The reason why I started posting true crime on this channel is because I accidentally posted a Tabo Besta. Remember when Tabo Besta meta uh, came to the fore, I think around March of 2023. I thought I was posting that story of Tabo Besta in my true crime YouTube channel only to find out that I had posted it on this channel. And by the time I realized that that video had already gotten 5,000 views and I was like, oh, this is a dilemma that I find myself in. So I ended up leaving it like that. And then I was that, and then I started thinking, where do I now post the sense the, the Tabo Besta meta? So I continued posting it on this channel. And then you guys enjoyed my commentary on that particular case of Tabo Besta when it came to the fore, including Dr. Nandiva Makutumana and all the shenanigans that she was doing. Then you guys said, hey Clancy's, can you please do the Senzo Meiwa murder trial, which is about to start in June. So since I was not interested in the Senzo Meiwa murder, so I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to do the Senzo Meiwa murder trial when it starts all over again, but I need to go and familiarize myself with everything that has transpired in the first trial. And that's exactly what I did. I was watching a lot of that trial. I mean, a lot of it. I got to understand who's who, doing what, who the five men were, and then nothing was adding up, even in the first trial. And then I was like, you know what? This confirms for real what I had thought back in 2015, that the man, that the Maywas will never find out who killed their loved one because I think the police messed up the case. So when I was listening to the witnesses on the box, I was like, no, this does not add up. Even when I started listening to the main trial, it did over. All those witnesses, others had changed their stories and I was like, what's happening? So subsequently, this channel became a court trial channel. And this is when you guys asked me to follow the Senzo Meiwa murder trial when it starts in June, 2023. I had to go as far back as I could to familiarize myself with this case, especially the details that transpired in the first trial. And I was more convinced than ever that Senzo Mayo was killed by one of the people, one of his friends that were with him in the Kumalo house. The point that I'm trying to make here is that I never got to know uh, Malisela Defo, let alone all the other lawyers and everything that happened to him, I'm talking about Devo. Knowing what I suspected all along, I think it's clear why he had to be removed out of the Senzo Meiwa murder trial's way, as he is responsible in turning the Senzo Meiwa murder trial on its head. Devo exposed a lot of things, the mishaps about matters, police, 
the minister, everything that you can imagine, Tefu actually unearthed and exposed it in court and said exactly what I always suspected to this case, that the killer was with Senzo at the Kumalo house on the 26th of uh, October 2014. The testimonies that I have heard in the main trial and in the trial within a trial all confirm to me as per my opinion that wrong people are standing accused of killing Senzo Meiwa. Now, since you asked that I look into Defo's matter and make commentary, your wish is my command. Now, we are having Defo 2.0. Is currently happening because they want Mr. Mgome Zulu out of the way. Then my question is, for how long will this go on for? Because the constitution is clear. Accused have the right to legal representation. So now if you're going to keep removing lawyers that's supposed to uh, defend the accused, Yet the constitution says they have a right to legal representative. How long are you going to keep removing these defense lawyers is what I want to know. Because your best bet is to change the constitution. Section 35 of the constitution to be specific. So I made a little note. Some things that I don't think many people know about. Maybe it might not even sit well with some people. But it's the fact. It's the truth. We've seen it many a times if you pay attention to court television i say that is why rich black people like those that are accused of crimes they only hire white lawyers to defend them you know why they hire white lawyers to defend them that's because if there is a crooked investigator or a crooked police officer they will be afraid to go after this white lawyer you know why white law firms they are well resourced so if you're going to come so let's say Ngome Zulu was a white uh, defense lawyer for dance or Defu was a white lawyer all this stuff that is happening to Defu and all the stuff that is happening to Ngome Zulu would not happen you know why because Gininda would be afraid because he knows very well that if he goes for a white lawyer the white lawyer with all the resources that they have will start digging in their background and find things that could be that they could use to their advantage to basically get Geninda not only fired but arrested, prosecuted, and the keys thrown away at his conviction. Now, because law firms that are owned by black people, most of them don't have resources like some white law firms. And some of these lawyers are struggling themselves, let alone have money to go and uh, dig into the background of Gininda and them. This is all alleged, by the way. So I continue to say Gininda takes advantage because he knows that the majority of black-owned law firms are not well-resourced. Some are even struggling to make ends meet. So that is why he's going after Mr. Ngome Zulu is going after Mr. Defu. He's probably going to go after everybody that is, uh, what do you call this, that is involved in this matter. Me, like I always said, guys, Mina, I am well protected because I've got resources behind me if they even try it. I am currently reading on Mr. Defu and things I've found thus far a great call for concern. For example, I watched a video when Mr. Defu was being arrested in the full view of cameras in court and in the full view of South Africans that were watching that particular proceedings. And guess what the police did? They just slapped him with the handcuffs behind his back and off they took him away without reading or informing him of his rights. Imagine in a court of law, the police do that. But they have the audacity to take the stand and say, yeah, we read or we informed Danzi and CBC of uh, their rights when they don't even know how the rights are recited or how they go. How? Because I'm interested to hear from the police officers that arrested uh, Defu if they read him his rights when they arrested him. What about uh, these J50? 
Was he given before he was arrested? All those procedures. It would be very interesting to find out if they were all followed. Because as I understand it, Mr. Tefu is sentenced to 12 months for contempt of court or trespassing, I can't remember. So I thought, let me explain myself as to why I haven't talked about Mr. Tefu. All that will change and I will give you my opinions of what I think. I say it again, it looks like our South African courts need a lawyer like Mr. Tefu to shake things up. Anyways, I hope you understand my position as to why I was not covering uh, Mr. Tefu's matter because I don't know him. And uh, he comes from the first trial, but it's true what you guys are saying, that he also deserves justice. And from what I'm reading, there's a, there are a lot of discrepancies that, uh, that took place, and I'm not quite sure how even a court came to a conclusion of sentencing him to 12 months. Uh, let's start with the disbarment. What processes that were followed for him to be disbarred? Did they follow due diligence, things of that nature? Or they were all influenced by whatever it is that they may have committed. And uh, the most feared police officer in the country came and said, if you're not going to take this decision, I'm going to arrest you for whatever the reason is. I don't know. I still ask myself, Magistrate Cronier, what does they have? What do they have on you? Because I would not have thought that a person of your caliber will find herself in this situation. Because I still think the answer lies with Miss Cronier. One day if she develops a conscience, maybe she even writes a book. Or maybe skips the country and writes something to the people of South Africa and say the reason why. This, this is and that. And that is why I recorded all that stuff. I don't know. I'm just saying. But I still say it again. The reason why black rich people hire white lawyers is because they want to protect themselves from being smeared with other crimes that they did not commit. So again, it looks like the poor will always find themselves convicted of crimes they did not commit. And I think uh, Mr. Defoe was fighting against that. And I think that is a noble fight that he should continue, whether as a civilian or as an advocate when he's reinstated. Because I feel like a lot of processes were not followed, including his conviction. I'm not quite sure if he's appealed or he is appealing or he's fighting all of this. I'm still reading more about Mr. Defo, but I do know that a lot of people are behind him and there are hashtags to free Defo. And I support those hashtags myself. Anyways, guys, if you like the video, give it a like. If you like the video, give it a like. Anyways, I'm coming up with the flu. That is why my spirit is a little bit down. But anyways, thank you so much to everybody that's super thanking the channel. But before I say that, Please subscribe and click the bell notification so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much to everybody that's super thanking the channel. I highly appreciate you guys so much. Please leave me a comment down below and let me know what other angles that I may not have come across regarding Mr. Defu that you would like me to talk about on this channel. And yes, hashtag free Defu. I stand behind that hashtag. Also, share this video far and wide and I'll see you next time with a new video. Goodbye.